Hi everybody. Hi my sweet lifers. Elisa Murray here hanging out with Father Andrew. We are doing our sweet life in Christ and today we're going to be talking about Andrew. We've been talking about the disciples and how we relate to them and how we can see ourselves in them and sometimes we can see different things that they've done that were making them more human. Yeah. You know, I mean obviously the people in the Bible were people <laughs> um, but the disciples tend to be elevated a little yeah. of a lot and so it's hard sometimes to see ourselves in them but yeah. today we're going to talk about Andrew. Yes. So Andrew is my personal favorite disciple obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Father Andrew. <laughs> um, no Andrew An so Andrew is traditionally held as the first called the first disciple called um, in gospel of Mark and Matthew Andrew and Peter were in the boat together and Jesus called them to follow me and they followed and they, that was the first disciples in Luke they have a similar similar narrative but they don't he doesn't name them uh, I don't he doesn't name Andrew uh, St. Peter and his brother and in John however it's Andrew who's called first now John he he points out that Andrew and uh, Peter were disciples of John the Baptist so they knew of John the Baptist they knew that John you know John the Baptist's mission was to prepare the world for the coming of Jesus to, re to prepare them by repenting and being baptized with water. And then Jesus is going to come and baptize them with the Holy Spirit. And so he's been pre so they, they've been hearing this message that someone's coming, the Messiah is coming, someone who's far greater than me, as John the Baptist said, someone whose sandals I'm not unworthy to tie, as uh, the scripture says. Well, so here's two disciples who've heard this. And, 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 and according to the Gospel of John, Jesus approached Andrew and said, follow me. And the first thing Andrew did was not, you know, follow Jesus and say, well, see, he didn't drop everything and say, see you all later. He went to his brother, Peter, and said, you've got to check this out. Mm -hmm. I found him. The person who John the Baptist has been talking about, who, who, who we've been waiting for, the Messiah, he's here. Come and see. And I love that line, come and see, because that, you know, the other disciples will will talk later on in this in a few episodes about that invitation. But it's just such a simple invitation yeah, come of see. come and see. So Andrew, the first thing he wanted to do was bring his brother along for this call. You know, Jesus talked about brothers and sisters will be ripped apart, families will be ripped apart. Andrew didn't want that. He wanted he wanted to experience this with his brother. He wanted his brother to experience it. So he went and witnessed. Um, to his brother, um, you know, and again, his brother could have said, oh, "She's silly person," right. like one of the disciples did. Who, how, how, yeah, I don't believe that, and said, "You have fun with it," but no, Peter followed, and it took. But it's because Andrew brought him along, and it always makes me wonder, you know, when we're trying to go out and, and spread the good news of Jesus, sometimes it's kind of you know hard. But what if they say no? What if they turn us down? And so a lot of times, especially for fiscal aliens. That always wins out. The fear of looking weird or, or, or you know, people turning us down overpowers the ability to go out and, and, and preach the gospel. And I always wonder, what if Andrew did not tell Peter about Jesus? I mean, who knows? You know, I'm sure maybe Jesus would have found the way. But what if? What if Peter never heard about Jesus through Andrew? What if Andrew just left? We might not have a St. Peter. Which, which is just crazy to think about, but Andrew did. So it always makes me think, what if we, wh why, you know, what if we didn't let the fear of the unknown mm -hmm. stop us? How many people can we, in a, and how maybe it's some important people down the road. I mean, we might convert, or we might introduce someone who may one day be a bishop of the church exactly. to Jesus. And it takes us just saying, I found Jesus. Have you? Or I know Jesus. Come yeah, and see. I mean, that's the thing too. Is like if you know, like for me, especially now, and and you know, watch other episodes, watch the channel to understand all of this because there's a lot of context that I'm not going to go into here because we've got to go through this. You don't realize your spot, mm -hmm. right? You don't get like a script every morning. You don't yeah. wake up and here's the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to do this. And tomorrow we're going to do that. And this is the reason why you're going to do this today is because this person needed to hear this this day in order for 20 years from now this to happen. You don't get the script with our life, yeah. right? But when you, again, look at it like I've talked about before, open back up and look at it with a bird's eye view, you begin to put the pieces together and you're like, oh yeah, if that person hadn't have done this, this wouldn't have happened, and if that hadn't happened, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Every piece of it is a web that is required to have the outcome be what it is. Yeah. And 
it's interesting because Andrew might not have known like his spot, but he felt compelled. Yeah. And he doesn't really know maybe the feeling of comp- of the compulsion to tell his brother to encourage him yeah. to require that him come with him. But in his place, he may not have even known that that particular moment of calling Peter and saying, come with me, yeah, come and see, would have resulted in all that had happened. But he didn't say no. no. So yeah. when you and me in our world, worlds today, and especially, you know, in any moment, if I'm in a grocery store or if I'm writing column yeah. or whatever it is that I'm doing where I'm involved with other people, whether it be personally in like you and mm-hmm. me right now in the same space or they're going to read me some month away. If I feel that there's something that I'm supposed to say, I say it. Yeah. Because I feel like now as a follower more deeply, because I've always followed Jesus, but as a follower more deeply, I'm more in tune to that. So I'm paying attention, more fine-tuned yeah. paying attention. Oh, yeah, okay, you want me to talk about that because that, that's a message that needs to be said or whatever that is, right? And so I think that that's where Andrew was. It's like he yeah. might not have known. Maybe at the end of his life he knew more of that. Yeah. But as we get older, we do. Yeah. That's the funny thing about getting older. The more the older we get, the smarter we get. Yeah. The more we're actually paying attention to those sorts of things. We don't do that as children. <laughs> we're just randomly doing whatever, yeah. right? You know what I mean? But when you get to be older, you're like, oh, 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 yeah. I need to talk to... I'm compelled to shake your hand. I'm compelled to give you a hug. I'm compelled to hope, help you get something down from the top shelf at the grocery store or hold the door or whatever. Yeah. You don't know what that little thing that you're going to do is going to dominate. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, our actions, you know, both negative and positive can affect so many. And, and yeah, that's a good reminder. And I, I, you know, I talked a little bit about that last Sunday about yeah. how, um, you know, our words and our deeds represent Christ, and um, and that's how the disciples were. You know, they, when they went out, they were representing Christ, and um, and and you know, we we can do we can we can do so much with that. We can um, we can, like I said, bring someone to Christ or bring or change someone's worldview mm-hmm. just by simple, simple interaction. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and it it and, and that Andrew did that a lot. I mean, a lot of the his he. There's other times. So Peter was, you know, and John was brought to just Christ by Jesus. But a lot of the, some of the uh, miracles were, you know, Andrew had a key part. So in the feeding story, <clears throat> it was Andrew spoke up and said, I saw a child with bread, you know, a kid with some bread and fish. Maybe we can, you know, but that's not going to be enough. But right. they were that kid. <laughs> um, but he introduced, he, he, he helped per, um, make that happen. Uh, you know, he, he, he constantly wanted to continue following Jesus. You know, he, um, he, including going out into the, to the world. And Andrew was a very busy, uh, disciple after the, the, um, the, uh, ascension when they got the spirit and they, um, went out and, and I made some notes here to kind of show, um, where all he went. So, you know, according to some traditions, he went out to Georgia. Right. Um, not the state. <laughs> right. The country. Um, but um, the Georgia church, the 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 the, uh, the Orthodox Church in Georgia holds him as the person who went to preach to these people. So here, once again, Andrew knows who the Messiah is, mm-hmm. and he went out and shared that with this whole other area that hasn't heard, mm-hmm. thus bringing up a church. It took him going and doing that. I mean, he could have just sat on his uh, and just said, "I'm waiting for the kingdom of God." Yeah, right. Ah. right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm baptized. I'm saved. But no, he wanted to get out there as quick as possible to make that happen. So you know, the Church of Georgia holds him, and Georgia holds him up. Cyprus. Uh, he went out to Cyprus according to tradition. Um, he went on, you know, according to tradition, he was going on a boat, and the the the, um, the, the, the uh, transport transport went off off ground. He ended up in Cyprus, and thus established uh, a church there. Um, you know, he went to Malta and, and um, established churches there. He he was busy. He traveled around just like nice all the other missionary. apostles. Yeah, just like all the other apostles he knew. We got to spread this. We got to make the world follow Jesus. And that takes going out and sharing who Jesus was and, and having these simple, um, um, ex, you know, the simple um, invitation, come and see. And that's what he did. He went all out. 
Um, one of my favorite traditions of Andrew, and one of, you know another reason I feel such a strong connection to him because of his connection to Scotland. You know, if you and I, I, I as you see, red beard. Oh, I'm married to one. Yeah, I'm married to one. Yeah, I'm, I'm have, married to one. <laughs> we have Scottish blood. And, we do. Um, and so Scotland is strongly connected to St. Andrew. He never went to Scotland. You know, it's, I, I, there may be some to think that, but he never went to Scotland. But Scotland's flag, you know, it's the blue flag with the white um, X cross. Um, that's the that's the cross of Saint Andrew. That cross, because Saint Andrew, just like Saint Peter, when Saint Peter was, um, they both were martyred. They both were crucified. However, they did not feel that they could be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. They right. weren't. They weren't that dignified. They weren't that important. So they wanted to. They requested their. Uh, crucifixions their crosses be different so Andrews they put it in an X form and put him on it like that and that became the symbol for Andrew um, and so the reason Scotland is so pro you know Andrew is so so um, um, so big in Scotland is because um, there there's a belief and tradition in Scotland that um, his his relics his remains were brought to Scotland by Constantinople himself yeah. and so here you have this this connection to Andrew who never stepped foot on the land in life but in post life, his relics has a connection to this land, and, and that's an also connection to our church as well. Because part of our flag, the Episcopal shield, it has two crosses: the cross of Saint George, which is England's cross. We talked a little bit about the formation of the church, right? Um, which is England's cross. That's the red cross going um, up and down, like the uh, Jesus cross with the white. And then in the corner, you have the blue with the white cross. Um, that's Saint Andrew's cross from our Scotland. Um, um, area. So here, Andrew is one of you know a lot of apostles. Paul's the other one. He went all over, but a lot of them they fig- they found places that they wanted to go, and they're kind of known there. Thomas is really big in India. A lot, you know, he went to um, spread in India. Um, you know, he had Bartholomew who is who also went to in- India, Ethiopia, and, you know, other places. And and um, and but Andrew kind of is just spread all over, including Scotland, Scotland. of all places. Yeah. And so it just shows the the. The, the 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 spread Andrew had just by mm-hmm. preaching this good news mm-hmm. and and that's really when I think of Andrew I think of someone who without conviction went out and witnessed to the world witnessed to his brother witnessed to others witnessed to the disciples witnessed to the people who Jesus was and he didn't let anything stop him from traveling he, I mean when the ship ran amok and ran aground well I guess this is as good as place as any to yeah. go and spread a church we're supposed to be here exactly and that was kind of his way too I mean like whenever he saw Jesus and he said follow me he said come and see mm-hmm. whenever he you know went like you just said and they weren't in the right place but you know he's like well this is where we're supposed to be yeah his whole thing was very much I don't want to use the word go with the flow <laughs> but go with the flow pretty much I mean he I think it was just the 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 the, the the faith he had in Jesus and God that he was put in a place for a purpose. Yeah. And this is, okay, well, I'm going to be, I'm here, yeah. so I'm going to make the most. I can you know, I, relate to that. I can think, <laughs> I mean, how many times have you been, in, I mean, you travel, you're a travel agent, so you deal with a lot of traveling, but people who are traveling somewhere and there's a plane delay or a cancellation or, you know, if we're on a cruise, or we can't go to this port, we have to go to this port. And, you know, we all think it's the end of the world, right? I know when I'm, my plane's delayed for an hour and a half or two hours, like, well, I'm going to be late. This is just, how is this happening to me? Er, I mean, Andrew <laughs> had a boat, it just ran aground, mm-hmm. and he's like, okay, I guess this is where I need to be. And that's just amazing to yeah. me. That, and it's just that go with the flow yeah. kind of thing where yeah. it's just like, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And, I, and it just makes me think well, sometimes, you know, when things don't go the way I think they're going to go, well, maybe. Maybe something good is coming here. Maybe something. What's interesting too, Father, at this point in my life is that, especially through the pandemic, mm. um, I'm really in an Andrew state of mind. <laughs> yes. Right. I, I, yes. I'm in an Andrew state yeah. of mind. I'm, I don't. I don't even. I don't have an expectation on any given day of a specific thing that's supposed to happen. Yeah. I am open to whatever the possibilities are. Every day yeah. for whoever it is that comes into my life, whoever it is that rings my phone, mm-hmm. I'm in an Andrew state of mind. That's a new thing. I, we need to make a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm in an Andrew state of mind. Yeah, I really am. I really, I relate really, really, really well with where he he was. Yeah, to everything because when when everybody stopped seeing me for photos and when you know I almost died with this yeah. stint stuff and. 
then the pandemic happened and, and you know I could have and the real estate all this crazy stuff mm -hmm. well everybody had crazy stuff mm -hmm. not just me I could have been like Rah! yeah and instead mm -hmm. I was like oh okay mm -hmm. now what what yeah. should I do yeah. tell me what I should do yeah and I went and planted seeds and started yeah. a channel and yeah. got closer to God Got really closer to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and that's really where he was. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to make some lemonade. Yeah. Things well, might not be what we expected it yeah. to be, but let's just make some lemonade yeah. and keep on a trucking. Yeah. Because maybe we're... what we're doing is actually what we're supposed to exactly. be doing. So let's not worry about what we thought it was supposed to be. We're supposed to be. Let's just live in the moment and be open yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. It, again, it's uh, you, 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 Andrew taking lemons and making lemonade. I mean, let's go back to the feeding store when Jesus said, we need to feed him. And I mean, again, Andrew saw this little Lowe's. I mean, obviously that's not going to be enough, but hey, you could try that. It's something. <laughs> yeah. And even when someone says, well, what's that among so many? Um, but he still threw it out there, you know, and that was enough for Jesus to make lemonade for everybody. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, he didn't let the little scarcity stop him from speaking up. From you know, or or a, a perceived setback. Oh, we got to feed all these people. There's only a couple of breads and fish, and there's not nearly enough. But hey, Jesus, you here you go. There's this. We have this, and you know, sometimes and that that goes back to you know, sometimes we think well, we just don't have enough to offer up to God. We don't have enough to give back to God, and well, God can make abundance out of our little bit, and it's just oh, yeah. it's up to us to offer that to God to make yeah. it happen. And that's including faith, you know, including a resource, you know, whatever. Um, God can make do with the little bit we had. God may, may do with the little bit of the bread and fish that Andrew saw and pointed out. And it took, again, it took Andrew to point it out. Mm -hmm. And he could have held to himself and said, nope, that's not enough. But he made the most He's out of cool the situation. Dude. He was. He's cool dude. He was. I really like Andrew. Yeah. Uh, Again, he was, he was, he was, he was, he knew who Jesus was. He was convinced who Jesus was, but he didn't want to hoard it to himself. He wanted to bring others in and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen guys, I hope you found some value in this study deep dive of Andrew. If you, if you didn't, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that you probably did though. I know I sure yeah. did. I really thought he was, you know, I've known about Andrew, but I didn't know about Andrew. Yeah. And the, this conversation today has really just been really cool to awesome. really make it even more feel like, you know, we can really relate. Yeah. We can really relate yeah. to Andrew. He's one of us. Yeah, he's one of us. <laughs> they so, all are. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I hope you found some value. If you did, do us a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell. We'll see you soon on another Sweet Life in Christ. Take care. Bye.